So Fisdale got fired, and you're ticked off about it. He's the coach of Memphis. He's the data guy. He's the young guy that we all like. By the way, he looks like he, he's got kind of a Princeton prof thing going on. He's got the glasses. <laughs> what? What's going? What, why are you ticked? Well, I just felt like he got a raw deal. You know, anytime you get rid of guys like Zach Randolph, Tony Allen, guys like that. Tough guys. You're not giving yourself a chance to win. You know, and this is the NBA. You need guys that want that, that care about the game. You need guys that's willing to fight and scratch to win. You know, they 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 got that name, uh, Grind City, from those guys. You know, those mm -hmm. guys grinded out a lot of games and a lot of wins. And when you take guys like that from a, a coach like that, a grinding type of coach, a tough-minded coach like that, it kind of takes away from the team. And I think he got a raw deal. By the way, you got into a Twitter spat last night with uh, Chandler Parsons, mm -hmm. who you were not a fan of. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not a fan of his. Not at all. You know, and even the fact that he's just a brotherhood, it's not a brotherhood like people think in the NBA. It's not like that. You know, when I when I defended Ron and those start, and the fans, I got killed by a lot of my peers, a lot of guys that play. So it's not a brotherhood. Guys don't have to have your back or with you like they think. And it's 10 guys who I can say that are literally my brothers that's in the NBA. 10 guys. 10 guys. You know, so guys don't hang out. You know, you don't even see guys in the summertime. So it's not a brotherhood like you think. Some guys are cool and some not. And that's so Chandler just realistic. Parsons, uh, by the way, he got a massive deal after a second surgery, right? Second knee surgery. And got a fat deal. And you got guys that can't even get an opportunity. Guys that's played 10, 12 years in the league that can't even get an opportunity, that's never had surgeries. But you got guys like that, you know, that you, he doesn't really care about basketball. And it's, it's, obvious, it's obvious to see. I mean... What you makes get, it obvious? Well, you give just say that I'm gonna give you an example. You give a guy like Draymond Green 100 million and send him to Memphis. He doesn't play well. They don't win. They are gonna kill Draymond. He's gonna be in the news every day. Draymond's not this. He's not the player he was in Golden State. Da 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 da. You haven't heard one thing about Chandler Parsons. Nothing. Eight points, nine points, but you fired a head coach. Let's go to Paul Gasol. Okay, Paul is one of the best big men in the league, by far. We all know that, right? Today's game. Paul has to do a little bit, I mean, uh, Mark has to do a little bit more. Excuse me, Mark Gasol. He has to do a little bit more. Sure. The seven-footers in today's game Gotta are shoot. getting triple doubles. Playing point guard. Greek Freak. Simmons. You got seven-footers now that are playing point guard. You got seven-footers now that are, that are getting 20 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, four, five, or six blocks. You got the two guys in New Orleans. They're, they're covering the whole stat sheet. <laughs> Boogie and Anthony. Exactly. So you got guys like that that are doing more at the seven-foot spot. So, Mark, you need to look at yourself, too and not just try to single the coach out because they're all in it together. And if, they, if they're not on the same page, these type of things happen. If somebody's going to get singled out, I just hate it had to be Fizz. Well, I think you made a great point. He's a grinder coach. They took away his two grinders, and now they want him to be the fall guy. Right. Um, speaking of the fall guy, uh, long— And let me say this. I don't mean to cut you off. Chan, I don't know him as a person, so it's not personal, but it's strictly basketball. You know, I've, it's a lot of guys, it's a lot of stars that I dominated in my career that I feel the same way about. So it's not personal. I just don't think he's that good to be getting paid $100 million. And you don't think he loves the game? I, it's easy to see. It's easy to see. People don't want to say that. I guarantee if you, if you bring in 10,000 Memphis Grizzlies fans, they're going to say the same thing. We're paying him too much for what he's doing. That's personal a little bit. It's not personal. Well, it's it's realistic. Just no, to not, I, to not care? It's realistic, though. Well, no, I mean, honestly, the reason – that's an interesting point. Is that personal? I like – I you know, one of my rules in this business is I never criticize a coach or an athlete for being raw – because then I use it as a topic. I'd be a total mm -hmm. hypocrite. I'm dying for people to say what you say, which is right. take us inside the room. Because I can't get access to the room. So when you say that, I know that you not only think that, but players are probably texting you thinking the same thing. Uh, a lot of, I've got a lot of texts from guys. And on my, on, my, on my Instagram, if you look at my Twitter, they're agreeing with me. That's, I think that, that what you're saying about Chandler, though, I'm, I'm not trying to defend you. I think it's understood in the league. He's making a lot of money, and his passion has ebbed. He's, he doesn't appear to be... That's I think hungry. it's a fair criticism. I think but that's been said players before. understand that. People on the outside looking in, as they are not athletes that hasn't played, injured. You know, I played with a broken toe. So I know what it's like to, to suck it up and play for your team hurt. Guys that's never been in that position, it's hard for them to understand. But fans of the Memphis Grizzlies, trust me, they're saying the same thing. Um, let's go to a couple of issues. Alonzo Ball uh, is struggling. Uh, mm -hmm. he is pa he's the opposite of you. He is passive. Mm -hmm. uh, he is not physical. He does not have yet an NBA body. Uh, what about people saying he's a bust? It's too early. This is a rookie year. I mean, you know, the kid, a lot of the stuff that he's been dealing with and has been put on him as a kid, I think 80% of the draft couldn't handle the way he's handled it. One thing about this kid, he hasn't been playing well, as, as we know he could play. And uh, a lot of people have put a lot of pressure on him. But one thing I like about him, 
he has something in him that a lot of players don't have. And I, he has some attempt dunking in him, which has been able to keep his composure. All the stuff that's been thrown on him, you should be doing this, you should be airing this. They, his dad, Crazy all the dad. pressure his dad putting on him, even with the nonsense that Luke Walton is telling him. Like, it's, it's a, he's handling it the best way. I don't think Luke Walton should be the politically correct coach with this guy. You know, he's thinking too much. You're the number two pick in the draft. Go out and play basketball. Don't worry about getting your teammates involved. Just go out there and play and let the game come to you. You're a rookie. You don't even know the game yet. And it, it's too much pressure on him. But what I like about him, I, what I even like I love about him, is it's not getting to the point where he's getting frustrated. He's keeping his composure. He's at an even kill. And he's just taking it as it comes. But as far as basketball, he's thinking way too much. And they're not telling him what he needs to hear. They need to pull him to the side. Look, bro. You're a rookie, you can't make no mistakes. You're still learning. This is your first year. Go out there and just play the game and let the game come to you. Yeah, but, you know, it, this is interesting. There was a – I won't call it a fight. I'll call it a skirmish a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And Lonzo walked away from it. Right. And this was the smartest thing he could have done. And, and it's coming from me. <laughs> it's the smartest thing he could have done. Why? Two reasons. Look at this fight. Caldwell Pope and uh, Eulis, the smallest guy on the court and one of the biggest guys on the court. They're not going to fight. When have you, last time you seen a fight in the NBA where guys really threw punches? It's all for TV. Lonzo understands that. They're not going to really fight. Nobody does that. And then, then again, okay, what I'm going to run over there for? A week or two ago, Patrick Beverly pushed me down and stood over me. Nobody ran up to help me. So when, 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 when that happens, that causes friction. Okay, so maybe they're not really with me. Maybe they're not having my back. Maybe they're expecting or thinking what everybody else is saying and, and being like my dad, you know? They, they're just mad at my dad, not mad at me. It's, it, it's a way, but I think he did, right? See, even right now, Patrick Beverly trying to get in his head. He he's keeping his composure. He won't let him, and I love that about that kid. Um, let's talk about the Kyrie-LeBron thing. I, talk, I said this yesterday to Christine. There are divorces where mm -hmm. the man and the wife get divorced, and they're happy. Mm -hmm. And they, by the way, they, 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 it, it was just never a perfect. Just one gets the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. Hey, I'm here to speak the truth, man. If I said to you who's going to win this trade, eventually long-term, not today, not tomorrow. Because I do think Cleveland today, when the playoffs come with LeBron. No, it, unless they win a championship, they don't win no, the trade. No, but I'm talking about winning the East this year, just the East. Oh, but if you're talking about the trade in general. No, I'm won. talking, so this year, mm -hmm. Gordon Hayward's not there. I, I'll take LeBron over the Celtics this year. I think long-term, who do you think wins the deal? As long as LeBron is in the league, as long as he's playing basketball, if he's going to pick up YMCA, LA Fitness, I'm picking LeBron. That's just what it is. I'm a, I, I love Kyrie. I talk to Kyrie a lot. You know, uh, every time I have a good game, I'm sending him a text. But we're talking about the king here. And he hasn't shown no signs of slowing down. As long as he's in his league, he's my favorite. Do you think he's staying in Cleveland? I think he should. I mean, why would you go anywhere else? This is where I think now. Steven, I, I said this yesterday. I went crazy. I kind of thought the Laker thing was fun. I'm watching the Lakers blow another Come game. here and lose? Why would you do that? No, I mean, I, I, it came to – it was an epiphany this weekend – I told you, it's so hard to be great that right. once in life you're great, be picky. Mm -hmm. Choose your friends wisely. Mm -hmm. Choose your business partners. Choose your wife. Choose your husband. If you are great, you have worked so hard to be great. The Lakers have not earned LeBron's game. There it is right there. They haven't earned it. You're right. They haven't earned it. And they don't have the pieces to make him want to feel comfortable there. You know, I'm, I don't – I mean, if he come here strictly for weather, <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would add another W in there for me, but for him, strictly weather. Okay, uh, now, one of the reasons I bring you on the show, because you're real and you're authentic, so I'm going to ask you, you, have, you, you, you were a tough guy in the league, and you were involved in that one uh, fight, which, mm -hmm. by the way, I, I, anybody that's ever listened to me knows, I supported the players in that fight. I went after the fans in Detroit. That was, that was on them. They, they, never, they never point that out. Yeah, by the way, it was later discovered when you looked up the fans in the fight did you ever read the story about the arrest records of the fans involved in the fight? The players were attacked. So you got involved in this ugly thing. I watched an NFL fight this weekend, Crabtree and Tlaib, and I thought about you, and I knew you were going to be on the show. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go to the NFL fight. You have Boom. been in a crazy moment. You've been in that, Stephen. Mm -hmm. What are these guys thinking? Are you aware of the crowd? Are you aware you're in trouble? Are you aware of your teammates? No, you're not. I think uh, when you look when you look at that the situation in Detroit that happened so fast like if there was a cup thrown on and our test and, and fight and it, yeah and next thing you know you're in the locker room trying to figure out what happened kerosene yeah blood this thing blood, lasted ten legs scratched up ten ten what ten minutes like it happened so fast and it was over like it you know you don't really think about nothing because your adrenaline is going but I think it should happen more in football 
Not saying that fighting is the answer, but okay, look who's fighting. Arguably one of the top five cornerbacks. Talib's great. Arguably one of the top 10 receivers, top 15 receivers. No question. You, they're competing. When your best players are competing that much where it comes to a fight, I, me personally, I love it because that's showing that they care and they both out there do, competing to win. These are two of the best players in the league. So I love it. If it was two guys that didn't even play, that came off the bench and started a fight, then that's a whole different situation. But I love it. This is, this is two of the best players in the NFL showing their passion and they're competing and they get into a fight. It happens. By the way, Tlaib's a very intimidating guy. Right. He's a tough – he is, like you, he's a tough guy. Mm -hmm. And when I first met you, you are like, listen, man, I, I've, I've been in situations in my life that I'm, um, I can handle. Yeah. Did you use – like, I think Tlaib uses his history and legacy a little bit as his brand. He likes you to know he's tough. Uh, Did you use yours? Well, I think I think it helped me because I'm, I'm not scared of nothing. I don't think I, I'm, I've been scared of God and weddings forever. You know, <laughs> my I'm, weddings. Yeah, because I, I got divorced. Oh, you just yeah, don't yeah. But I, I, you know, so I'm I have someone in my life now that's kind of getting me out of that scared okay. of weddings. But I've always been scared of God and weddings. I'm not scared of nothing human, no animal, no nothing. So, in a situation like that, you know, the things I've been through in my life and I, and I survived. A fist fight is nothing. That can't hurt me. Getting punched, so what? That's nothing. So not being afraid of nothing is kind of good to have in sports. Not, not to, that's, that, that's the chip on the shoulder you need. You well, know? I, always thought, I always thought locker rooms that I covered, I covered the Blazers. You need a couple of guys who got your back. You can't, by the way, Wayne Gretzky, he never played in the team without a tough guy. Right. <laughs> Ever. Right, right. I mean, that's the reality of it. MJ didn't either. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. You always got to have a little, and this, I'm, this, I mean this as a compliment. Rodman was 90% hinged, 10% hinged, unhinged. Right. You had 10% unhinged. Mm -hmm. Art, by the way, Meta World Peace comes on the show. One of our best guests. My guy. He's got 10% unhinged. Yep. I'm good with it. But he, but, hey, you know what, Tope, to his point, he's changed a lot. He's changed a lot no, for he's the a, better. He's probably the most, in my life doing this, the most surprising person I've ever met is him. Yeah, he's the most interesting man in the world. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1, First Things First with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.